now what we're going to do is go to pins. All right, in this particular case, I'm just going to randomly grab one. I'm going to set it up, and it's 130, let's see, 143.2. And I'm just going to keep them in sequence here for a minute. I'm weighing the pins, in a lot of cases, because of the density of the steel versus aluminum, I can barely mix and match. Now, some people are, uh, well, quite frankly, they don't want to do that. And they want, don't want to do it because once you get them in order here, it sends it over to the wash basin, and they find out that they've mixed them up. So a little bit of care has to be taken. However, the later pistons that you're going to see out there pretty much are cast or formed now in such a way that they just don't have a lot of areas. They used to leave us a lot of material underneath the pin boss. We still have some here in the weight pad, but remember, aluminum is really a light material, and you have to shave a lot. The bottom line is you cannot compromise that piston without compromising structural integrity. Now, looking at this, I can see 143.2, and I'm going to go on down here, and I'm going to find that, well, we do have one here at 143.6. There's four tenths, so I could take that one and put it in the lightest piston. Now, in some cases, we actually machine them, and we'll get to that shortly. So what we've done now is we've gone ahead and we've got this. I'm going to sit send. I'm going to hit close. There it is, 143. This particular application is a press fit, so I'm going to tell it it's a press. And I'm going to say P-R-E-S-S -S space F-I-T. And hit enter. And so I'm telling myself that there's no locks. But it could be locks, such as spiral, eclipse, eclipse and it could be two, four, so we leave you a designate, but it would have a weight here. If I see zero, I better see press fit. Now we go over here to rings. The rings are a combination of the oil, rails, top and second, and if you happen to have a shim type that you're taking and supporting the piston because the pin location is high, you would put that all as a unit, hit print, and again, you could log in the number. Hit send, close, now, all of our data fields are filled. We come over here, this is a 50% formula. Our bob weight total now is 1794.58, or each half would be 897.29. All right, we have the bob weight card pulled back up, and we're gonna notice that on the big end, you'll see that we've already selected 392.9, and the computer does this for you, finds the lightest one. But we're going to go down and find the heaviest. In this case, it's going to be number six rod. So I'm going to reach over and I'm going to grab number six rod. And now the goal here is to take and actually modify the rod by removing material off any end. Now, you have to be careful some places because there are some areas that are critical. And also, you don't want to generate so much heat that could distort the bore. Now, once we're done with that part of it, we'll, we'll go over and we'll finish the other rods and we'll take it within a known tolerance of say plus or minus a half gram for racing and maybe even tighter would be your choice but for street work it's generally plus or minus one gram. Now over here on the small end we see we're 168.19 and so we'll go down and we'll look and we can see 170.29, 170.3 everything else is fairly close so I'll go ahead and select in this case rod number three we're going to bring it up and we're going to notice, of course, there's a weight pad. And again, by whatever means, you're going to remove this material. Now, we're going to give a couple examples in just a few minutes. But just understand that the key is to remove the material without generating excess heat or force that will cause a distortion to either bore. All right, what we've done here is we've grabbed the number six rod, and you'll see right now it's at 395.1. We're going to take it over to our bench sander, and what we're going to do is we're going to remove some stock material here, and we're just going to coarsely bring that in, and then we'll follow that up with a little polishing.
we've rehung the number six rod onto the scale system to confirm that we removed the right amount of weight. Now, we showed you two different methods, and one of them, of course, was that we roughly ground it, and then we turned around with polish, and if you look at it here closely, you can see we removed all of the burrs associated with the repair. Now, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to get the number three rod that we had, and we also did this on the little end, so let's bring it back in, and you can see that we have removed and polished, and you can see right now that the material has been deburred. Now, in the overall scheme of things, this is very important because we don't want to create any stress fractures. Quality jobs have to look perfect. So if I grab a bob weight here, and I just split it very quickly, let's see if we can do this. By the way, you'll notice that I'm screwing these off and we're not using quick nuts. Why not quick nuts? Well, the one reason we don't use the quick nut is that it's unsafe. Just pure and simple. If it was safe, my insurance company would let me do it. We know that these threads may loosen for some reason, but they probably won't fall off without a rattle, as opposed to a situation where we're going to have a quick nut that's going to release. It's going to allow the part to separate, and when that crankshaft's spinning, even at 500 RPM, it can do some physical damage to the technician. So we want to be very, very careful with that. Now I'm going to split the weight. I can set it down either way. I don't care how you go about this. Just set it there. And what I'm looking at is 452 now. So I'm going to come over and add a weight. That's going to add to it. That take me up to 703. I'm going to add another weight. I'm up to 828. So you can see what I'm trying to do is get to 897. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to guess real quick. Now 887.5. And there we go, I'm 897.4. I've missed it by 1100. Quite frankly, don't chase it. Cut. Plus or minus. Okay. All right, now that we have the weight set up and we know that we're on target, you'll notice what we can do here is we can lay these out by order, and I can see, I can just very quickly count there, and I can see there's seven units. So what I have is a general profile, so I can take each one of these weights and just add them up like I was laying out a poker chip table. But in this particular case, though, we do want to take notice that once we bag off the retaining bolt, the retaining bolt is there, again, to hold these weights, and I'm going to be redundant only because it is important. Whenever you use quick nuts, which has been somewhat of a standard in the industry, I will tell you there are cases where they have actually released themselves, and as a rotating issue, that stuff comes off there like trap metal. When we take our waist, though, they interlock, and so they maintain the same register throughout the build. In other words, what you want to ensure is that you're building from large to small, don't reverse it because it will change the moment center of the bob weight. And these, this particular unit is what's called a moment match set. Now, basically that's one half of the equation. I'm just going to lay it down. By taking the other set, I don't believe that I ever want to trust anybody, but I know these weights are real close. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to come back with the same build. And we'll go ahead and grab seven shims. Two, four, five, six, seven. There we go. And right now I am a half off. So I'm going to come in and add one half gram. Now, these particular weights all weigh the same. And again, the time that you're having to spin versus quick nuts versus a spinning nut is insurance for safety. Now, it's your option. You can do what you want. But I'm going to tell you, when one of your technicians is over at the eye clinic or worse, you're not going to think this was worth it. Now, once we're done here, we've got a complete set. We reconfirm by setting the two halves up with all the retaining nuts, and we confirm the numbers. And we want to ensure that we're sitting there. In this case, we're within four tenths. So we're done with this.